joining up this joining us this morning to go further in depth a man who uh, often polls issues for the Democratic Party a political strategist who can think outside the box and certainly outside uh, partisan restraints it's our friend Doug show and Doug we welcome you to America's Forum thanks for having me so taking a look at what is going on here when when the statements came from Deb, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and others as a as someone who's been there done that on the GOP side of things I was a bit dismissive but do you see this as an opportunity for the Democrats to make some gains with this uncertainty in the GOP leadership ranks now well I would certainly say it's a chance for them to stem some losses that is the Democrats are in uh, free fall I think most polls please uh, uh, understand that uh, most polls show that there is clear clear slippage for the Democrats and a likelihood of the Republicans to win the House uh, more handily and to hold a uh, five, six, seven seat game, which would be enough to give them the Senate. Um, bottom line to me, um, this gives the Democrats something of a lifeline because it allows them to continue to run against the Tea Party. And the person who I think should be most worried is Mitch McConnell. Really? Yeah, because he's you know, this shows that the leadership of the Republican Party is not popular. Um, Eric Cantor went down to a convincing defeat. Uh, McConnell's opponent is, I recollect, got about 35, 36 percent of the vote. So I, I, you need a united Republican Party if you're going to beat someone like uh, Allison Lundgren Grimes in Kentucky. And so far, the Republican fissures are getting bigger and bigger. Hmm. Interesting take, Doug. I would agree with you that this is a lifeline for the Democratic Party, but for a different reason here. And maybe you can back me up on this or maybe you disagree with me. But the issue of immigration talked about, of course, is a key factor in this race here. We heard yesterday uh, the minority leader, Nancy Pelosi, saying that immigration is not dead. A lot of folks can argue with that. But isn't it true in some degrees that the Democratic Party does not want to really solve the immigration issue before the 2014 midterms because they can keep hammering Democrats with it and driving uh, their base voters out to the polls. Well, let, let's let's be candid about it. The Democratic Party is not going to be able to solve the immigration issue because they don't have the votes. But they do have the ability to politicize the issue, which is what I took uh, Nancy Pelosi's comments to mean. So we've got that situation going on, and we're seeing the the video from this. Doug, just one other note, and this is for um, pro illegal immigration activists on both sides the word illegal has been dropped in the immigration debate is that by design for the open border advocates on on both sides of the aisle well certainly i mean uh, it's much tougher to advocate for people who are illegal than are people who are here uh, without um, uh, appropriate uh, uh, authorization or uh, approval so yes that's uh, that's been changed but what hasn't changed is the strong opinion in the center right and indeed through much of the country against them and with uh, children coming in from Central America now and in tragic stories to be sure. I don't think it's going to get any easier uh, in the near term to pass immigration reform. Well, it, it makes it very difficult. And again, this issue transcends partisanship. There are uh, pro illegal activists on both sides of the aisle and as you mentioned across the political spectrum a lot of Americans are saying hold on a minute we're concerned about kids but do you think there's any coordination uh, bringing these kids up from Central America uh, no, to what's I, happening? I, 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 look I don't. I think this is a humanitarian tragedy. I think we have to do something whether you want to call them illegals or, or something else. I think we have to do something about the problem. I think the other issue the American people feel in the few polls showed it today is there's more partisanship and more division and less action and I think ultimately we will all benefit if we come together on immigration and other issues to try to solve problems rather than whether it be on the left or the right politicizing it. Well Doug one of the main arguments right now at least on, in Washington about this issue is the motivation as to why these unaccompanied minors are coming to the United States. If you listen to Jay Johnson, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and Democrats, they will say it's because of the conditions in their native countries. But some Republicans, including Jeff Sessions and others, are saying, no, this is the message that the administration is sending uh, to these foreign countries, basically saying, we have lax immigration laws. You know, give us your poor, you're tired, you're hungry, and now is the time to bring them here. Do you think that's a fair criticism of this administration? No, I, I, 
I really don't think it's a fair question. Really? I don't think. No, I, I don't think the administration is using uh, children uh, who are in inhumane conditions to make a political point. I don't think that of anybody, and uh, I uh, very much want to believe and do believe that that is just not the case. Well, let's turn to some other uh, situations here. Uh, as we look overseas and with Congress and its oversight uh, attentions, you, you've got a situation where yesterday... There's the former Republican senator, now Mr. Obama's Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel, in front of the House Armed Services Committee yesterday, trying to explain and justify the uh, Taliban 5 swap for Bo Bergdahl. What do you see coming out of this situation, Doug? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, this is still a, uh, an emerging situation. We don't know all the facts. We don't know the circumstances of the trade. We don't know why Congress wasn't notified. Uh, Hagel said he could have done a better job. That's a, certainly an understatement. Um, and why we exchanged uh, one uh, person who wandered off his post a couple of times for five hardcore Taliban fighters. That's, that's something we still need answers to. And I suspect we're going to be asking for a long time. Well, especially egregious, and you touched on this, Doug, is the notion that uh, uh, what, 90 members of the administration and staffers knew this was going on and not one member of Congress was informed? Certainly, I know the buzz in Washington has been, quote, incompetence. But if this is not, how can you explain? I, I don't know if it can be dismissed by that, um, that kind of uh, absolution, if you will, that, well, it was just a mistake. To have well, that kind of thing, you've been around Washington a long time. Have you I, ever I have, seen look, this? I don't think it was a mistake. It was a misguided, in my judgment, series of choices that I think require and hopefully will get further investigation. And I think that we need to hear from the entire administration to understand why, how, and how uh, what happened and to avoid this in the future. Well, Doug, another issue that's becoming more and more of an issue uh, potentially in 2014 here is what's happening, what's unfolding right now. Uh, in Iraq. There was a lot made during the 2012, at least the final presidential debate uh, about the status of forces agreement in Iraq. Uh, that could potentially come up again here uh, directly or indirectly. Do you think this will become an election year issue in the midterms if the violence uh, well, in Iraq I, increases? I think the, the issue of weakness of America, I, I have to uh, go on to uh, my next uh, appointment, but I, I can say in conclusion, the weakness of America, the impotence of our forces overseas, Eastern and Central Europe, Afghanistan, and now Iraq is becoming palpably clear. I'm not sure Iraq specifically will be an issue. I think everyone's happy our boys are home, but nobody can be happy with the developments recently and the taking of Mosul. Doug Schoen, we appreciate your time this Thank early you. morning in Washington, D.C. We'll let you get to your next appointment, but as always, your insights uh, prove very valuable, and we thank you, sir. There goes Doug Schoen, and it's interesting to hear him talk again about foreign policy emerging as an issue. Yeah. You and I talked about these midterms, and we often see economic issues at the forefront. But if, in fact, this ISIS group is uh, establishing the caliphate we've heard about and Iraq were to fall, uh, it will not sit well with the American people, nor the continued unrest in the Ukraine and elsewhere. So. This is something that, uh, as people say, will it have an effect in the midterm or will it, will it affect more 2016 when we're looking for a new commander in chief? Yeah. It's going to be there. It's going to remain a problem. Well, also interesting, J.D., to read in the New York Times today that the, the nation of Iraq has requested drone support, potentially from the United States here, quite different because drone attacks have been blamed for the increase in terrorism in many ways. So we'll have to keep our eye on that aspect of this story as well. Well, the Iraqis say a state of emergency exists and uh, better the drones than sending them a ceremonial reset button. At any rate, what do you think about what's going on? We'd love to have your comments. Why don't you tweet those comments to us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also email, connect at NewsmaxTV.com and Facebook.com backslash Newsmax. We're coming back right after this on America's Forum.